Hello, and welcome to another pocket process video. I'm Tracy, also known as Mercy Tiara, and I make scrapbooking process videos and more here on my channel. Today, I am working on my August project life or pocket pages, and I do have the sizes of the photos down on the bottom of the screen there so that you can know what I printed them up at. Uh, the only one that's wrong is the square ones. They are printed at two by two, not two and a half by two and a half. But uh, other than that, those numbers are pretty accurate. I tend to print my photos if they're large and significant stories. I print them at the full four by six for horizontals and three by fours for verticals. And then any smaller or less significant or not as good photos, I tend to print those up at two by three. I am just going through my photos here to group them together by story. Most of these photos are one-offs. I do have a few that are related to one another that I'll want to make sure that they go in side-by-side -side pockets. And my first step for doing a pocket page always includes a, a time where I just lay out all the photos and try to decide how much space I need to tell some of the stories that I want to tell here just to see how much space these, these photos and stories will be anticipated to take up. I'm also thinking, so I'm not only thinking about how much space I need for each of these stories, but I'm also thinking about balancing the page visually in terms of weight and color and all of that. Now I have a couple of four by six grid cards here that I'm just cutting down to three by four. These are Mercy Tiara kits cards, which are not available yet, but they will be available soon. So that is very exciting for us to be bringing pocket page kits to you guys very, very soon. So uh, for now, I just have the grid cards. I do have several designs, but they're only prototypes, so I can't show them yet, but they're on their way. I am just, uh, as you can see, I'm just trying to make these photos be balanced on the page. As it is right now, I think that the top of this layout is a little bit too photo heavy. And uh, the the page with my computer screen that shows my Notion, that one is very, very light. It's obviously almost all white. And that would be balanced a lot better if I brought it up to the top. Now I'm going to design this entire page off balance. And it's not until the very end and you're not even going to see it, but you'll see it in the photos at the very end. I will make some switches and I will tell you those as I get through, as I go through all. I'll, I'll let you know which ones end up changing around as I go. Now, these are some of these pocket flips there by Snap, which is a Simple Stories sub company or, or line, I guess. Uh, and these are, they're called photo flips. And I really, really love using these. And I like that they're clear. So a lot of times my flips are cardstock or paper, but using these photo flips gives me a clear option where you can see the photo below. I'm thinking about doing both photos of the cats, but making them fit on one, on one cell. So that's one option. So those die cut frames that you saw, I, I put one up there that says August. I, I designed those and cut them all up in January of 2024. And I'm just working my way through them, grabbing one every month as it goes by. And so I'm all the way up to August. So I just grab the August one and I just layer it on top of a large photo, like any large four by six photo that I have. Sometimes I use photos that I grabbed from the internet, just of my city or my town. And and uh, other times they're my own photos, as is the case in this one. Now, I'm also looking through my ephemera. I keep my ephemera in that little, it's called a pop-in organizer. And so I keep all of my ephemera and pocket page supplies in that. And I have a few things here that are just kind of left over. I have my watch case. I thought that might make a cool four by six pocket, but I, I never have enough real estate to spend on something like that. And of all of my ephemera, that's the least personal and meaningful. So I ended up just throwing away the watch case. Uh, and I will instead, if I have room, I will use the coffee packaging because that was a gift from our friends from Hanover. Now I'm going to be using the six by eight 
paper pad from uh, Reasons to Smile from Chamel. And that was an add-on in the August kit from Mercy Tiara Kits. So I have that kit, which was called Smile. And I also have some of the cut-aparts that are exclusive to my Patreon tiaras. So I have some cut-aparts from that. I have some embellishments from the Smile kit from Mercy Tiara Kits. And I also have the paper pad that I'm going to use. Uh, mostly the paper pad will be used on this layout. I'm starting with this, uh, with this die cut piece. I cut it up on my silhouette and I designed these when I kind of didn't know what I was doing. I feel like I've learned a lot since I, I still don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I, I certainly have learned a lot since I designed these words. And uh, anyhow, they are all cut too big and now I know better and next time I design something like this they will be the right size but for now I've already cut them so I'm just trimming them down every time I use them and so that's what I was doing right there. Now this photo was uh it, it had a different aspect ratio so that it didn't fill up like if I printed it at four by six then it would cut off some of Scott's face or my face so I printed it to fit which means it is less than four by six. So it's still six wide, but it's less than four tall. So I needed a piece of pattern paper to put below it. I mean, behind it, of course. And so I did choose this piece of rainbow paper, even though it's almost all going to be covered up. And I chose it because the photo had oranges at the tops and blues at the bottom. And so I thought that it just kind of blended in with the photo in a really nice way. So that's why I ended up going with that one. Now I'm just looking for something that I can put towards the bottom of this photo or I'm, I guess I'm going to just play around with where it might go, but I chose this label. This is from the printables. These are downloads that you get when you buy a Mercy Tiara kit. And uh, I just print them up on my regular inkjet printer and then just cut them out. Sometimes I cut them with my brother's scan and cut so that they all cut at once automatically. Sometimes I'll print them up on sticker paper and cut them on my silhouette. I do it all sorts of different ways but for the most part I just print them and cut them as I need them because I don't always need many of them. I'm just writing down movie club is on the go now and I for some reason put an M instead of an N so I had to use some correction tape and then when I use the correction correction tape it, I didn't really I find it difficult to write naturally over correction tape so it still looks a little weird but that's okay. Now I have this leftover paper because of course when you cut a six by eight piece into a four by six you have another four by six left over so I just cut that in half so that I could potentially use it for this photo here this is a screenshot so it is cut at two by four inches and that gives me lots of space on either side of it to uh, so I do need to have a card behind it it's not wide enough to fill a pocket on its own. And I am realizing here that once again, I've printed, I've printed all of my photos up incorrectly. So this photo is too long. So as you see what I did there, I just cut part of it and layered it with itself so that I still had the white border going around the top of that photo. I just kind of covered the little bit at the top that doesn't really matter. Now my printer seems to, I don't, I don't know what's going on with it, but I need to start printing at a slightly different size in order for my photos to fit in these pockets. And so I used to always print them at this same size, which is actually just a teeny smidgen smaller than the sizes that I had on my screen there. Um, but they're still not printing up the proper sizes. So I'll have to me mess with that before I do my next Project Life uh, video because I would like to not have to trim down all my photos like I have been in the past several times that I've scrapbooked. So I just went through my stamps here, my letter stamps, my smaller ones, because I want to stamp out either Taylor Swift or Swifty or something like that. And I end up going with the word cardigan and I just write it on a piece of scrap paper. Those are four by six index cards that I get from Amazon. They're super low quality cardstock, but they're really great for having uh, for storage purposes. And also I just use them for scraps as well. 
So I grabbed my Stampin' Up! stamp chamois so that I can clean all of these letters as I go through. And I am using this really cool letter from, it's from Ellie's studio, and it's called, it's called Hazel. And so I'm starting in the center, which is why I wrote it down. I also just like to write down the letters that I'm stamping just so I don't forget a letter because I often do. Sometimes I forget a letter even when I've written it down. So this is an essential for me. So it helps me to, and then I just kind of space it out and figure out which are the middle letters and circle them usually so that I can start in the middle and then work my way out. So I ended up writing cardigan and I made cardigan. I stamped it so that it was basically sitting on the lower line of that label. And then I'm going to use my Sharpie pen to write Taylor Swift. But before I do so, I'm just, I'm just really roughly uh, spacing it out with my pencil so that I can then write over top of those. And that way I knew that it was going to be centered or ish, right? It's close enough. And uh, then there, you could see the little bits of the, of the pencil. So I did end up erasing the pencil using my little Stetler white eraser there. Now there's white space on either side of that. I think that a, an enamel dot on either side would look really nice. And uh, I think I will do that, but I didn't for these photos because I didn't really notice that until now. So it's, I'm always looking for places and ways to use up enamel dots. So this is one of those grid cards from the MTK cards that are yet to come. And uh, I love grid cards and our Project Life kits or pocket page kits will always include some grid cards because I really love being able to use my scraps or cut into these papers like this and design my own cards. So there will always be some of these. And uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking a piece of the, and I loved this little ivy paper from the Chamel paper pad. So I cut it into four by sixes and then I cut one of those into three by fours. And then I just cut a couple of strips, one narrow and one wider. And I will run those across the top and the bottom. This is a very basic go-to Project Life card that you can very easily make with scraps and you don't even need an index card or, or I mean a grid card like I used. I really love grid cards. I find that they just look a little bit more finished and they also make it really easy for writing on and doing some journaling and lining things up and whatnot. So I just put the forest app screen cap there and I wrote forest app for focus is all that I wrote there. Just in case I forget what that app was called at some point in my future, I use that app pretty much every single day. So I can't imagine forgetting it, but you never know. And so cutting another one down to four by six and then again into three by fours. Now this one is a, um, it is a photo of a page in the book that I was reading. It's a very emotional and serious book called Mouse and our German friends bought us a collector edition of that book. And so I've been reading it. Uh, I'm finished it now. But at the time in August, I had been reading it and that page really spoke to me. So I took a picture of it so that I wouldn't forget that quote. It's kind of like a little a little moment between a father and son talking about uh, the Holocaust. And so I'm just trying to not be too decorative with this one because it is a very serious topic and I don't want like little flowers or, you know, like you don't want to be too dazzling with a, with a, with a, with a topic that is so serious. So this pink tab that I'm working on right now, that's one of the cut aparts that uh, tiaras over on Patreon get every month, the higher level tiaras get a digital file that includes printables. Sometimes it's a cut apart or it's a digital cut file, but usually it's printables. And I've been doing that for the higher level tiaras just as an extra thank you because over on my Patreon, all patrons get access to the exact same video uh, coverage, but yet I, I have a, a group of tiaras who nonetheless always support me at the higher levels. And I just really appreciate it. I'm always taken aback by the fact that people will do that. And I'm so appreciative because without the support of, of all of my tiaras, I would not be able to do the videos that I do because it takes a certain amount of 
funding to be able to take the shortcuts that I need to take to be able to manage all of the things that I do in my life because I run two businesses and also have a family (laughs) and whatnot. So uh, thank you so much to them. And uh, that's the cut apart that I'm using from my diamond tiaras, diamond and chipboard tiaras get access to a printable every month. I'm just going to add a little wood veneer arrow here just to point to make it clear that this journaling goes with that card beside it. They're both mounted on the same background paper, so it should be clear, but you never know. So next I have this four by six photo of my Notion page or one of my Notion pages. I've been using Notion instead of a planner since I think April. And oh my goodness, it's a game changer for me. I have ADHD and I need to use something. And I have been using a Hobonichi for the past several years. And before that, I was using another planner. Um, And I switched, I was kind of the year before. So 2023, I was half Notion and half, uh, half Hobonichi. And this year I made the full switch midway through the year, actually right after I filled out my my Hobonichi cousin, I uh, decided to go all digital and it's making a world of difference for me. It really works. It's not for everybody, but for me, it really works. I've been using Notion to manage my YouTube channel for several years now, so I don't know what took me so long to start using it for a planner. I am writing out the word Notion and I am using this mini stepping stones alphabet. This is from Studio Calico from way back in the day. They had a larger font called Stepping Stone and it was very popular and always sold out. They would um, reissue it and it would immediately sell out again. It was very, very popular. And this was a smaller version of that font, but you could only get it. It only came in the kit club, so it was never really available as a separate purchase, unless if they did that later on. I don't know because I stopped Um, paying as much attention when I stopped getting kits from them but anyhow that's a that's a studio calico font and I just spelled out the word notion as you can see it is very imperfect but that's what I like about stamping a title is I know that it's not going to be perfect and I kind of like that wonky look it gives it a nice casual look and I really do like that I'm going to put these little books on the edge just almost like the label is a shelf and then I put a pie chart there too these are the puffy stickers from Chamel's Reason to Smile they came in the embellishment kit for the smile kit from August at Mercy Tierra Kits I'm just going to play around with which of these embellishments these are Paige Evans embellishments that also came in that kit I believe they also came in the embellishment add-on And I'm just going to take that purple one. It just fills the space. It it kind of fills in the empty space on the Notion page uh, quite nicely. And it's vellum so you can see through the parts of it where it doesn't, uh, where it does cover up the words. Now, this is a photo of my daughter's ramen that she made for herself. She's always making different ramen recipes. And I decided to use this pattern. It has lots of orange. It picks up on the orangey brownie beigey tones of the noodles and uh, I I quite like that little floral pattern quite a lot so I'm happy to be able to use it here. Now I'm thinking I would like to spell out the word ramen and I thought about using those blue sparkly letters and then I saw this in joy and I thought oh that just looks perfect. I'm going to layer it with the photo like this and place it on there and now you can see it's not very legible it kind of blends in it does look nice like that but wait till you see what I do with this I really love how it turns out this is a journaling stencil that I have I actually designed this one and it will be available in our shop I keep saying it'll be available and it's not but we're really 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 close now it's coming I promise if you've been waiting for this stencil it's going to be worth the wait because it's really very handy to have it's my one of my most reached for tools of all the tools that I have. So as you can see, I just wrote out some journaling lines there. And now I do want to use a thicker marker so that these words will stand out on the pattern paper background, but not quite that thick. See that S there? That's too thick. So I knew I had a medium marker. I just couldn't find it. It's the brush tip of the Faber-Castell Pip Pens. That's the one that I went with. And I'm spelling out my journaling. It says, Sophie loves to make ramen recipes of all kinds for her lunch. 
Now that enjoy is just blending in so much with the noodles. And so I thought, let's just try this and see if it works. And wowzers, it works really well. The, this word enjoy looks so amazing outlined in black. I just adore it. So I'm going to, I'm just using that exact same brush tip Faber-Castell pit pen. And the brush tip is just such a nice, bold marker. I just love it. And those pit pens, they have India ink in them and they're super dark. They're the blackest of black. I just love them. And look at how great that looks. Oh, that just takes this card to the next level. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Just to pick up on the gold sparkly glitter, I decided to add two little stars up here to balance it off. And of course, I will also have to outline those. So we'll do that right now. Sorry that my hand kind of uh, covers it a little bit, but I'm just running my marker along the outside edge of those stars the same way that I did for the word enjoy. And now just to close up this card and finish it off, I'm just outlining the outside edges of the card and also of the photo just to give the photo a little bit more definition on the card there. And that brings us to the end of page one, although I will be moving these cards around a little bit, that I'm going to switch the Notion card with the card from the pub. And I went on a break there, and while I was on the break, I came back and got a look at my layout from afar, and I noticed that this card really is almost entirely white from a distance, so I just wanted to add some black uh, elements to this so that the word notion wasn't the only black thing on this page and also just to give this card a little bit more weight. So I'm using a slick surface writer. I'm using my Tombow mono twin pen which is an oil-based pen and I just added some little outlining and some little doodles on the insides of the petals as well. And now we're on to page number two. As I said, some of the cards on page number one are going to be mixed up with each other, and you can see how that looks at the very end. I'll point it out again when, the, when I show the photos. And for now, I am making a flippity flap. Now, a, a flippity flap is my technical word for a 4x6 or 3x4 pocket that has a tent flap on it. And so these six by eight paper pads are perfect for making these because one six by eight piece of paper scored down the middle is a four by six flippity flap. So it's perfect. And I just need to figure out these photos because they are not cut the right size. So it's going to take me a few minutes of just trimming a little bit and a little bit more, a little bit more until I get it trimmed down to the point that I basically would like for there to be a white matting around the outsides of both of these photos. So I do want them to be the same size as well so that they look, you know, so that they go well together. And at this point, I'm realizing I thought I was using that paper because I didn't much care for it and it would be covered with other pattern paper. And then I decided it would be really nice if the inside of this flap had lines on it. So I decided to go with this paper for my flippity flap instead. So again, the back side is white on both of these, so it doesn't really matter. I do like, I do, I don't mind. I'm not going to say I like because sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't, but some of these six by eight pa pattern paper packs are single sided and sometimes they're double sided. And this is one of those times when I don't mind that it's single sided because I can use the white background here a lot more easily than I could have used a patterned background. So this is working out well for me. I am going to have to trim down this photo as well. So this whole flippity flap is going to be about my scrap room reorg that's happening. It's almost finished and I am filming it as I go and posting the videos to YouTube slowly but surely. Uh, wait a second. One of those has a mat and one does not. So I'm going to trim down the mat. I'm not going to use my trimmer because... Uh, because it has adhesive on it already and I don't want to get the adhesive all over my trimmer. So I just trimmed it down with my scissors and now I am outlining the outsides of both of those just to make them have a little bit more presence on the page. Uh, do you know, to be honest, I feel like I would rather them be matted than have them be outlined like that, but I didn't want to go to all the trouble of doing it, so I just left it as it was. 
Now I want to use a tab here so that you know that this needs to be opened. You're going to know that it needs to be opened anyways, because I'm going to put something very bulky on the inside of this flippity flap that, uh, you know, that's a bit of a controversial decision because, uh, we don't always love our, our pocket pages to be super bulky, but in this case, I just, uh, wanted to go with it. I liked the look of what I ended up doing, so I left it. Now I have this tab punch and it is from Stampin' Up. It's the small circle tab punch and I really like it. It's perfect for Project Life because it's so much smaller scale than the other tab punch that I have. But I, I wanted to have a white mat on it. And the punch that I had, I have a punch that it's labeled as three quarters of an inch, but I think it's actually a little bit bigger than three quarters of an inch and it's almost filling up the tab. You can barely see the pattern paper on it when I use that size circle punch. So I am going to use one of my waffle flower circle dies in the perfect size. And I've got so many of those. I've got both sets of them. So as long as you've got both sets of them, you will have a circle for whatever size you ever need. And so I just punched, uh, didn't punch, but I die cut two of those, not to be confused with my scrap one there that I'd punched with my punch. And now I just need something to put on that little mat that I just created. There's this little circle stamp and I couldn't even tell what word was in it, but it ended up saying epic. And I thought that was pretty good for my scrap room reorg. So I'm going to stamp the word epic in a circle on that circle and then put that circle on the circle of the tab. <laughs> Lots of circles going on here today, and I'm loving it. I'm using Real Red by Ink by Stampin' Up. I have all the Stampin' Up colors or all of the main colors from that, that company, and I really love the ink. So I uh, that is my brand of ink that is preferred for me. But there are so many different brands of ink, and they're all wonderful. So whatever you've got, go ahead and use. You don't need multiple brands of ink. Just just get one and, and stick with it. That's my, that's my approach. <laughs> I, I wasn't always that way. So <laughs> I've, I've had my share of multiple inks uh, along the, along the years, but, uh, I've tried to stick to one brand now. Now here's something that if I could do again, I would have cut along those scallop edges, but I didn't. And that's okay. So this is another little trick I have for shortening things. You just cut it anywhere, inconspicuous if you can, and then you just layer it upon itself so that it ends up shorter than it was before. And it's just, those are hand-drawn grid lines on that, so they're not exactly perfect. So it's not lining up exactly perfectly, but that is okay. Before I glue this down, I do already have adhesive on it, but before I glue it down, I'm just going to add some string. This is Lawn Trimmings in white from uh, Lawn Fawn. <laughs> and I'm just going to outline this with my Tombow Mono Twin Marker. It'll give it a little bit of boldness. And I'm also going to outline the scallop. And going over it again, because it was just a little bit too thin, I wanted it just a tiny bit thicker. And now I'm going to journal. I'm going to journal in bullet points. And the first one says, added card making stamps to Notion. The second uh, bullet point is changed to vinyl sleeves. The next one says moved to my Alex drawer. And the last one says de-stashed several sets. And there's my journaling for that photo of, of all my card making stamps. They all fit in one Alex drawer and I am not going to be expanding beyond that. So when that's full, I ha can't buy any more. Or if I do, I have to sell some. So I found this die cut and I, I thought instead of like finding a journaling die cut, I thought I'd use this frame because the paper behind it is lined. So it's easy to, to do some journaling right on the background paper. First, I'm going to outline. I outlined the inside with my regular Sharpie pen because I just ran it along the paper. But then the other one was the die cut, like the, the other outline was on the outside of the die cut. And because they are slick surface die cuts, I do have to use my mono twin marker when I'm writing on it. So that's what the journaling is in 
in on the tag that's below that I just did the bullet points on. So now I have more bullet points to go along with this photo of my desktop and it just says acrylic drawers for markers and embellishments, uh, roadcaster on an arm, hello teleprompter in brackets for work, and desk space is much cleaner. Now I have decided to use these thickers for my title and I love them. So I'm spelling out scrap room with these super bold, bright blue glitter stickers. Love them, but the only way that they'll fit below the photo is if I overlap it with the photo, which is fine because there's all this space where my grid mat is on the, on the photo and I don't really need that. That's not an important part of the story. So there we go. Now, because of those thickers, this card is not gonna lay super flat, but that is okay. Now, at this point, I decided to go with just the plain cat photo because I didn't wanna to have to mess with figuring out how to layer two cat photos together. And next, I'm going to do the second flippity flap for this page the second and final one, which is these photos of my, of some beverages that my daughters made me. My daughters keep me drinking every, every non-alcoholic drinks, but they keep me drinking all summer long because one of my daughters was working at Starbucks all summer. And so she would bring me home a Starbucks drink every second or third shift. She would bring Sophie home one one time and me home one another time. And uh, then my other daughter, Sophie, she just loves making things. And so she was always making me different concoctions of bubble tea and different iced coffee drinks and whatnot. So I'm just trimming down my photos because they're all sized wrong. <laughs> so so you will, you will just see me trimming down everything. And then I had a little bit of white showing. So, oh, the outside photo didn't need to be trimmed down because it's outside of the pocket. So it doesn't have to fit. It's okay if it's a little bit big. So I left that big, but then I had a little strip of white up at the top that I had to cover. So I just positioned the photo of us with our juices, the green juice. I think it was, that was frognog. Um, and we're kind of cheersing there and I put place that at the top and then that reasons to smile sticker was just perfect for there. So I was so happy to get to use it there. Now I'm trimming out another one of these labels from the cut aparts from the main kit for the smile kit. And I'm just cutting around the edge of this fancy label. And I only have to fussy cut one side of it because the other side is going to be hanging off the edge of my photo. I'll trim that off like that. And now I have a place to do some journaling. And the journaling inside of this one says, live and so keep me hydrated and caffeinated with their concoctions all summer. And I did have to look up how to spell caffeinated. So I just asked uh, Lady S. And there we go. I did kind of misspell concoctions. It wasn't really a misspell. It was just like I put the wrong letter. I knew how to spell it, but I just put the wrong letter for some reason. Uh, and now I have to think about what I'm going to do with these photos. So I have one of the cats. And I think I'm just going to put some word stickers on this one. So these word stickers, the navy blue one says patience is a virtue, the green one says happiness, and the other one says sunny days. And I like how those look on the photo. And now here's a photo of me at work. Well, it's not really me at work, but it's my view when I'm working at my sunny side office. This is my psychology practice. And I'm just punching out one of those labels. Those labels that come with the kits are sized so that the circles will punch perfectly with standard punches. So that one is one and a half inch. Actually, that's a one and a quarter inch punch. And then I'm just fussy cutting the edges of this, which goes pretty quickly. And I'm going to layer these two together. It's going to do it like this, but... I'm going to change my mind. There's this blank spot on my wall. I really need to get a wall hanging for there, but I just can't decide what to put. So it's been empty for, well, it's been empty since 2019. So I don't know if I'm ever going to put anything there, but maybe someday. <laughs> uh, I kind of tore apart the label there to 
make room for the circle. So I had to re-glue it back together there. Now my journaling here says working at Sunnyside Thursdays and every other Friday. And now I do want to take a little puffy sticker here. And a backpack would have been good because I do sometimes bring a backpack to work, but I put this flower instead because it fit better. And then I also put a little tiny star up in the top corner just to balance it off a little bit. And now we're almost done. Look at this. I decided I'd like to put another little tab on the other flippity flap just so that they match and coordinate. And also I've been noticing that I don't always notice when there's something to lift. So I'm going to try to remember to put tabs on all of my flippity flaps so that it's clear that something is interactive here for you to lift. This one, I didn't bother cutting a circle or even labeling it. I just put a little sticker on each of the, uh, of the sides of the tab. And now this is an old school yearbook uh, from my elementary school years that my, now my hair, she's my hairdresser now, but she used to be my friend in, I mean, she's still my friend, of course, um, but uh, she cuts my hair now. And uh, she found this, we were in the same class together. So she found this photo of me from way back when, and I don't have any photos of myself from my childhood. So this was pretty cool. Uh, I made sure that I kept it and uh, scrapbooked it. So I'm just cutting out these teeny tiny little labels. And as you can see, the circle ones punch with the one inch punch. And then I just hand cut the other one. And this will fill up some of that dark space at the bottom of the photo. And it also gives me a place to say that uh, Kathy found this pic. And I will put a little backpack beside that because it is a school photo. I decided I'm not going to put anything on the picture of the door because it's kind of self-explanatory. It says, welcome Ellie, and it's a half Canada flag and a half Chilean flag. And then I'm cutting this down. I matted this photo of my layout with some comic books. I matted it on one of those brightly colored papers from the paper pack. And I'm just going to put it on this. I'll put it on this and then I'll outline it a couple of times here to give it a little bit more definition. I put it a little bit askew. And I'm going to put this giant sticker in the corner here. I love how that looks. Oh, I really love how that looks. It's just so fun. And then the last thing I'll do is I will take two word stickers and put them on the orange one up here says glad you're here. And the bottom one says read more books. And I'm just going to do some messy outlining all the way around the outside of this one. But I'm going to leave gaps where the sticker is so that the foliage foliage from the flowers interrupts the border and here she is I think it's all done I'm going to do one last little walk around the page and just make sure that it's not missing anything and uh, any opportunities to use up some of this product is always good but I decided that I really like it as it is because this layout is quite busy it's very photo heavy and you will see some photos in a few minutes but before I share those photos just a quick shout out to my patreon supporters these folks help make this channel happen so big thanks to all of them and here are those photos. Now, as you can see, I made a few changes just to make it look a little bit more balanced. And I think it does make a pretty big difference in how the overall page looks. Now, here are some of the close ups and you'll also get to see the interactive mechanisms with the flippity flaps as well. Here's one of them opened. And then here's the page with the coffee flippity flap closed and then here it is with it opened I love that reasons to smile sticker I'm so glad I got to use it there and 
these photos are a little bit mixed up, so my apologies there. Here are some of the other places where you can find me. Our Kit Club is up there at the top, and make sure you check out our Facebook group as well. And my Patreon is linked. All of these links are always in the information section below for all of these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. P feel free to subscribe. Leave me a comment if you have anything to say about this one. I'd love to hear whether you're pocket scrapping and if so, what approach are you taking monthly, weekly as you can? Let me know.